morning. Today we are celebrating the feast of St. Ambrose, bishop and doctor of the church. He lived in the fourth century, born in a noble family, very well educated, while he was still a catechumen. Because of popular acclaim, he was asked to be a bishop of Milan. He was baptized, soon he became a bishop. And he fought against Arianism. And then he stood for faith, and he was always strong in condemning anything that is spoken against the church. He was not even afraid of kings. And he baptized St. Augustine and St. Jerome, two important people in the church. So today, as we celebrate such a great saint, St. Ambrose, let's ask him to intercede for us that we might be strong in our own faith. And now we shall begin our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's ask God to forgive our sins and make us worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most gravest fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Ambrose a teacher of the Catholic faith and a model of apostolic courage, Raise up in your church men after your own heart to govern her with courage and wisdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord and the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abode where jackals lurk will be a marsh for the reed and the papyrus. A highway will be there called the holy way. No one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, nor beast of prey go up to be met upon it. It is for those with a journey to make, 
and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Our God will come to save us. Our God will come to save us. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in the land. Our God will come to save us. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Our God will come to save us. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. Our God will come to save us. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, the king will come, the Lord of the earth, and he himself will lift the yoke of our captivity. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and the teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there and the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some man brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence, but not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith and said, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to ask themselves, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, What are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God, and struck with awe, they said, we have seen incredible things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Sin and sickness. Sin and sickness. These two things often are connected, especially those days. If someone is sick, if someone undergoes uh, a severe destruction or some damage, people would say he might have done something wrong, 
that's why this has happened to him. We see that even now in, in few places. And we see this in Job. When Job was affected with skin disease, he lost all his property and family. His friends came and spoke to him and said, you might have done something wrong. That's why this has happened to you. In those days, if people who have sickness, they think either they or their parents have something wrong, and that's why this has happened to them, which is not always true. But Jesus, and they also believed, the sickness will go away from them only when their sins are forgiven. First, the sins have to be forgiven, and then the recovery or the cure has to take place. So that's why when Jesus saw a person, a sick person there, he says, your sins are forgiven, which would automatically mean you will be cured of sickness too. And Jesus also is proving to the Pharisees and the teachers, the teachers there that he is truly the son of God and thus God who has authority to forgive sins as well as to cure. There, you might have heard a popular quote. There are three types of people in the world. The first one, people who, people who make things happen. And second, people who see what happens. And third, people who wonder what happens. In a similar way, we have three types of people in the gospel today. People who make things happen, a positive people. There was a paralytic. Maybe his friends or his family, they wanted to do something for him. They carried him. And there was a huge crowd. They did not go back. Today, Jesus is busy. There's too much of crowd. Let's go back and come tomorrow. No. We have to do something today for our friend. They went up to the roof, removed the tiles. Think of the damage they might have done. How the owner of the house would react. They were not worried about anything. We have to do something. People who do things positively. They removed the tiles and lowered the person. And that second group of people, people who watch things happen. We have that group too in the gospel. They have seen everything that happened. They wondered, they praised. We have never seen anything like this. They are neither good nor bad. Passive people, they just see, see things happening. And the third group, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who do not want anything to happen. Negative people, positive, passive, and negative. If something happens, they are there to criticize and to find fault, not to contribute anything positively. Dear brothers and sisters, we could be in any, any one of these three, three types of people, but let's ask and pray that we might be positive people, people who do something for our own self, for our own faith first, and for the other people who are around us. It's very interestingly, the gospel doesn't say the paralytic himself believed in Jesus. It doesn't say anything like that. When those people brought him down, Jesus looks at their faith and tells him. So intercessory prayers are very powerful. We should do something for people who do not believe, people who do not come to church, people who need God's grace, bringing them into the presence of God. Looking at your faith, God may bless them. Let's be people with positive attitude, doing something for ourselves and for others. And now we shall all stand and pray for our needs. For the church throughout the world, may she grow in faith, hope, and charity in her ministry. We pray to the Lord. For governments and world leaders, may the Advent message of hope in a new world inform and direct their decisions and actions. We pray to the Lord. 
for all who struggle to find meaning and direction in their lives. May the peace of Christ be a light and hope for them. We pray to the Lord. For all of us, as we journey through the season of Advent, may the Holy Spirit continue to transform our hearts to that of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may they enter into eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray now? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 For Ken and Virginia Burchard, for whose intention this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we place these prayers before you with trust in your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. May God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual ring. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightens St. Ambrose for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with new, ever new, and, and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks in exaltation as we acclaim. Holy. comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, St. Ambrose, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co haste eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We shall pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, thy will be done on our as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be filled.
leaders who have been strengthened by the power of the sacrament, O Lord, so to profit from the teaching of St. Ambrose, that hastening and fearlessly along your path we may be prepared for the delights of the eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We shall go in peace. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.